This is an experiment to see if I can make something of my YouTube channel. For a while, I've had an idea kicking around to give voice acting or announcing a try, since people have told me I can do a passable, deep announcer voice. With one small exception, I never actually tried to do anything with it. I was inspired to make some kind of video, but I didn't know what I wanted to make. I saw friends doing Sculptober or Inktober, where they worked on a sculpture or drew a drawing every day of the month and posted it online to keep themselves honest. Seemed like a cool idea, so here I am. I've never really been into acting, voice or otherwise, so who knows if I'll even really enjoy this. I figure I'll give it a shot if I like it, cool, and if not, well, no great loss. As a final preface, I have absolutely no acting training, never mind voice acting training. I literally typed voice acting things to read into Google and clicked on the first link. I'm going to try reading some public domain works, don't want to start off by infringing on copyrights, and take it from there. Also, forgive the potato video quality, this is my laptop's webcam. Tonight, I'm going to read the opening of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It was on that first Google result, is fairly short, and doesn't have dialogue. I do not want to try to figure out how to do character voices for now. I'm going to read it with only minimal preparation and whatever voice strikes my fancy because I want to get something done and go to sleep because it is 1.15 in the morning. <clears throat> Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change, for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead? Of course he did. How could it be otherwise? Scrooge and he were partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole assign, his sole residual legatee, his sole friend, and sole mourner. And even Scrooge was not so dreadfully cut up by the sad event but that he was an excellent man of business on the very day of the funeral, and solemnized it with an undoubted bargain. The mention of Marley's funeral brings me back to the point I started from. There is no doubt that Marley was dead. It, this must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am going to relate. Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. There it stood, years afterwards, above the warehouse door, Scrooge and Marley. The firm was known as Scrooge and Marley. Sometimes people new to business called Scrooge Scrooge, and sometimes Marley, but he answered to both names. It was all the same to him. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire, secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. The cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his cheek, stiffened his gait, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue, and spoke out shrewdly in his grating voice. A frosty rhyme on his head and on his eyebrows and his wiry chin. External heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No warmth could warm, no wintry weather chill him. No wind that blew was bitterer than he, no falling snow more intent upon its purpose, no pelting rain less open to entreaty. Foul weather didn't know where to have him. The heaviest rain and snow and hail and sleet could boast of the advantage over him in only one respect. They came down handsomely, and Scrooge never did. Nobody ever stopped him in the street to say, with handsome looks, 
My dear Scrooge, how are you? When will you come to see me? No beggars implored him to bestow a trifle. No children asked him what it was o'clock. No man or woman ever once in all his life inquired the way to such and such a place of Scrooge. But what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked, to edge his way along the crowded paths of life, warning all human sympathy to keep its distance. Was what the knowing ones call nuts to Scrooge. Scene. So, we'll see how it goes from here. No promises that this is not the very last reading that I'll do. Bye.